now we are going to study about physiology of bacteria so put a smile and let's dive into it so what are the bacterial growth requirements so bacterial growth requirements are the minimum nutritional requirement okay these are essential for growth and multiplication of bacteria so these are minimum requirement so it includes carbon oxygen nitrogen hydrogen then inorganic salt like sodium potassium sulfur phosphorus magnesium manganese and iron so now let us talk about what are bacterial vitamins so bacterial vitamins are those substances which are additionally added okay so some fastidious bacteria that means fastidious in terms the bacteria which requires high nutritional content so some fastidious bacteria needed certain organic compound for their growth it is important so such growth organs growth factors are called our bacterial vitamins so for example vitamin b12 that is our cyanocobalamin and vitamin b6 pyridoxine are required for lactobacillus then there is niacin required for haemophilus influenza brucella then folic acid for enterococcus faecalis then our niacin is for haemophilus influenza we already told then there is riboflavin riboflavin that is our vitamin b2 which is needed for bacillus anthracis okay these are the bacterial vitamins then let us go into the next topic what do you mean by generation time generation is nothing but the time required for a bacteria to divide into two daughter cells these are called the generation time then what do you mean by total count and viable count? Total count in a culture media represent live bacteria plus dead bacteria. Okay, these are called total count. Total count can be counted by demonstrating under microscopy by the presence of newborn counting chamber. So microscopy is the method how we do total count. Then there is viable count. Viable count is the live bacteria only. Okay, so uh, the viable count are done by four plate method okay four plate method is the method how we demonstrate the viable counts then let us go into the bacterial growth curve which is a small important topic so in bacterial growth curve there are mainly four phases okay so first one is the lag phase then the second one is the log phase which is exponentially divided then there is our stationary phase there which ceases division and then there is phase of decline there is where the uh, bacteria is dead okay so these are the four phases of bacterial growth curve so let us deeply go into each phases first one is our lag phase so what happens in lag phase is that the increased metabolites and enzymes for the division so they prepare the preparation stage is the lag phase preparation for the division is the lag phase they increase in metabolize and enzyme as a result there will be increase in size okay there will be increase in size and reaches at maximum size at the end at the end of lag phase they reach the maximum size then they divide exponentially that phase is called our log phase log phase is nothing but divides exponentially as a result what happens as a result their size will reduce size decreases okay also there will be they are biochemically active due to division they are biochemically active so it is the best phase to demonstrate biochemical reaction in a bacteria okay which phase log phase then also they will be uniformly stained so log phase is the best phase to demonstrate a bacterial structure because they uniformly stained okay so these are about the log phase then comes our third phase that is stationary phase So what happens in stationary phase is that there will be seeds of nutrients. The nutrients will reduce in log phase by the utilization. Okay. By the end of log phase, there will be reduced nutrients. So what happens is that due to lack of nutrients, some microorganisms, some microbes will die and some will multiply. So there will be a balance between the dead microbes and uh, multiplying microbes. So there will be a stationary phase. Okay. When we do a viable count, there will be a stationary line in the graph that is called stationary phase. Here what happens is that number of progeny formed 
is just enough to replace so this happens in stationary film number of progenies formed is just enough to replace the number of dead cells okay what happens in stationary phase is that there will be more storage granules storage granules increase in order to survive okay storage granules and also due to the unfavorable condition some may undergo into sporulation and also bacteria will become gram variable and so our fourth phase is phase of decline okay our fourth phase is so what happens in phase of decline there is complete exhaustion of nutrients so the there will be a continuous bacterial death occurs in the phase of decline so when we do viable count there will be a declined line okay in the growth curve because of continuous cell death but when we do a total count there will be a stationary line because uh, the continue there will be also calculating the death of the death cells okay so there will be a stationary line in total count and a declined line in a viable count due to continuous bacterial death okay so these are all about the bacterial growth curve then let us go into the factors affecting growth of bacteria the first first factor is oxygen so based on oxygen utilization we classified bacteria into six classes the first one is the obligate aerobes obligate aerobes are the one who required 100 percentage oxygen the oxygen is necessary for their multiplication that is called obligate aerobes for example our pseudomonas Pseudomonas, our mycobacterium, tuberculosis, then there is nocardia, then there is brucella. Okay, so these are some examples for obligate aerobes. Then there is facultative anaerobes. Facultative anaerobes are aerobes. Okay, these facultative anaerobes are aerobic bacteria which can also grow in aerobic anaerobically so okay anaerobically so facultative anaerobes are aerobes which can grow anaerobically then facultative aerobes are anaerobes which can grow aerobically okay then there is micro for example for uh, aerophil uh, facultative anaerobes are Asterisia coli and faculty aerobes examples are lactobacillus. Okay, faculty aerobes example lactobacillus, where are micro aerophilic bacteria, example helicobacter and campylobacter. Then there is obligate anaerobes that can only grow in anaerobic conditions are called obligate anaerobes example our clostridium tetanae then there is aerotolerant anaerobes these are anaerobe anaerobes which can also tolerate oxygen for some times but they do not use it that one is the different anaerobic aerotolerant anaerobes are anaerobes which can tolerate less amount of oxygen for some times but the thing is that they will not use oxygen they can tolerate oxygen but will not use oxygen they are anaerobes example clostridium histolyticum okay this is about oxygen obligate anaerobes examples our nocardia and brucella pseudomonas mycobacterium tuberculosis facultative anaerobes are aerobes which can grow anaerobically example asterisia coli facultative aerobes are, aerobes are anaerobes that can grow anaerobically our example is lactobacillus then there is micro aerophilic bacteria that can grow at low oxygen tension that is example our helicobacter and campylobacter then there is obligate anaerobes they are completely in the lack of oxygen they grow in lack of oxygen example our clostridium tetanae then there is aerotolerant anaerobes which are anaerobes they will not use oxygen but they can tolerate oxygen for some time 
that are called aero tolerant anaerobes example or clostridium histolyticum then there is a second factor that is nothing other than carbon dioxide so the bacteria which require high amount of carbon dioxide are called as capnophilic bacteria our example is streptococcus pneumonia okay example is streptococcus pneumonia they require high amount of carbon dioxide then there is the fourth one is the temperature so based on the temperature which they grow they are classified as three psychrophils mesophiles and thermophiles psychrophiles are the one which can grow under less than less than 20 degrees celsius they can grow below 20 degrees celsius our example is pseudomonas Then mesophiles are the one which can grow from the 25 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Our example is most of the pathogenic bacteria. Most of the pathogenic bacteria are mesophiles which can grow from 25 to 40 degrees. Then there is thermophiles which require high temperature in order to grow. For example, they grow from 55 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is 40 degrees Celsius. Our best example is Geobacillus Stiaro Dermo Phyllis Okay, Geobacillus Stiaro Dermo Phyllis They are used as a control in sterilization technique because they can tolerate high amount of temperature they are used as control, okay then there is another factors like pH that can some can grow in basic medium some can grow in acidic medium then there is light some require high light some require in the dark some require uh, medium moderate term, uh, light okay so then there is osmotic effect some require a hypertonic culture media some require hypotonic culture media so these are all the other factors which affect the growth of bacteria so I hope you understand this chapter and let us start the new chapter with a beautiful smile. Let us cover it. Thank you.